Right, so welcome back and let's now look at another example where we use the definition of a limit. Right. So in this example we want to prove that the limit of x squared plus 2x plus 2 as x tends to 1 is 5. Right. So again let's just see, what do we have to prove? Required to prove. Right. Oh, I seem to have lost my piece of chalk. Well, let's see, what do we have to prove? Well, according to the definition, we have to prove for any epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a delta bigger than zero, so that if absolute value x minus a is between zero and delta, then absolute value f minus l is less than epsilon. Right, so in this case, that's our a, that's our l, and that's our f of x. So f of x is x squared plus 2x plus 2. Right, so now let's start the proof. Again, we want to find an estimate for f of x minus l, so in this case our l is 5, and we want to find some expression of x, which is x minus a, in this case a is 1. That's what we want to find, some inequality involving an expression containing this term. Right. So, in this case it's a little more involved than in the previous examples. So let's see how we'll go about it. Right. So f of x minus 5, it's x squared plus 2x plus 2 minus 5, that's x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now the thing to notice here is that you can factor this expression. Right? You'll get a term x plus 3, x minus 1. Right. <coughs> now this is the term we're after. Right? We want that term. Now remember, our delta here right, shouldn't depend on x. Right? It should depend only on epsilon. Right, so we need to somehow get rid of this term. Now, <coughs> how we do that is as follows. Right. At the end of the day, we're going to take x minus 1 to be less than delta. Right. So let's see what happens if we restrict the values for x. Right, so we say, okay, well, what happens if, say, x minus 1 is less than 1. Right, you could make it less than 2 or less than 3 or whatever you like. But we'll just take x minus 1 less than 1. Right, so basically, there's x equal 1, there's 2, and there's 0. So now we're looking, what happens if we take x just in that interval? Right. Well, what happens to this term? Right, that's the one we want to get rid of. Well, if absolute value x minus 1 is less than 1, then absolute value x plus 3, right, that's the same, saying absolute value x minus 1 plus 4, right, x minus 1 plus 4 is x plus 3, right, and that's less than x minus 1 plus 4, right, by the triangle inequality. Right, and this is a less than 1, right? so all of this is less than 5. All right. So that means if we restrict the values of x, right, we can get an upper bound for this term. Right. So let's call this equation A. Right. So by this little calculation here, we see that by A, right, if a, we get that f of x minus 5 
is less than pi absolute value x minus 1, right? but there's a restriction if absolute value x minus 1 is less than 1. Right. So this whole thing, let's call it B. Right. You see, this inequality isn't always true. It's only true if x minus 1 is less than 1. And that's important. Right. Because that tells us how to pick our delta. Right. So, fix epsilon bigger than 0. Now, how are we going to pick delta? Oh, this inequality tells us that we should pick delta as epsilon over 5, right? Remember, this epsilon could be any positive number, right? So, and for this inequality to work, this absolute value x minus 1 should be less than 1. Right? So that means we must make sure that our delta is also less than 1. Right? So we pick delta, not as epsilon over 5, but as the minimum of epsilon over 5 and 1. Right, so if epsilon is 10, right, then epsilon over 5 is 2, so then the minimum of epsilon over 5 and 1 is 1. Right, so if epsilon is, say, 1, then we've got minimum of 1 over 5, 1. And that would be 1 over 5. Right. Now let's see what happens. If x minus 1 less than delta, then, well, firstly, absolute value x minus 1 is less than 1. Why? Because delta is less than 1. So this means that we can use this inequality. Right. So by b, absolute value f of x minus 5 is less than 5 times absolute value x minus 1, right, which is less than 5 delta, which is less than or equal to 5 epsilon over 5, which is epsilon. Right, so here, remember, we have to give a reason. Delta is less than epsilon over 5. Right, and now, right, the rest is just like in every other example. Right, we finish off our proof. I'll just have to erase this. Right, we finish off our proof by saying, oh, this is true for all numbers epsilon bigger than zero. So by the definition of a limit, this limit x going to 1, f of x is 5. Right. And that's the end of the proof. Okay. So in this case, there's a little bit more work involved in obtaining this final inequality, right, which tells us how to pick our delta. Okay. And then we have to be careful not pick our delta, when we pick our delta, because in this case our inequality is conditional. Right. It doesn't hold for all values of x. Only for those where absolute value x minus 1 is less than 1. Okay.